Hello, this is Abdul Mati Asiri with Light Welcome you in another Boeing 737 video tutorial. And this video will continue our discussion regarding visual approaches. Uh, we are still simulating left uh, downwind runway 3 for right. Uh, we are maintaining 6,000 feet and we are at flaps 5. Coming up on a beam, the uh, runway threshold. So I'm going to go to the legs page just to uh, take the runway and put it in a fix to get the direct distance to the runway since we don't have it in the PFD. So we'll maintain 6000 for a while and once we pass a beam, the threshold will start our descent. Uh, this is one technique to use which is to use the direct distance to the runway with the normal mental math. So the distance times 3 for example here 5 miles 5 times 3 is 15 that is 1500 and the only difference being since we are still uh, maintaining a downwind to double the uh, the altitude so we'll end up with 3000 so if you were at 5 miles from, from the runway and 3000 feet then you can do a left base with no problems but keep in mind, uh, we are talking about 5 miles, I beam the 5 miles point and not the direct distance for uh, I beam the runway, I mean, because if you are like now 5,000 and 1,500, if you do the turn, you will not be able to, to land on the runway. But we are talking about the uh, the 5 miles on the extended center line here of the runway. Alright, now uh, we have passed the uh, threshold and we'll start a descent to 2,000 feet and again we'll use 1,200 feet per minute uh, this descent rate uh, works perfectly in this technique and now we'll start utilizing the technique so at 6 miles 6 times 3 is 18 that is 1,800 if you double that 3,600 and you compare it to your altitude you are at 5,700 so we are still high if you are within 500 feet then that uh, should be okay you can do the turn if you like all right so at seven miles again we multiply seven times three it's 21 that is 2100 double that's going to be 4200 so at seven miles if we are at 4200 we can do the turn with no problems so we are 800 above so we might delay our uh, base up to 7.5 because if you go to eight eight times three is 2400 and that's going to be 4800 so 8 miles might be a little bit late so we'll do the turn at 7.5 okay so 7.5 we'll start our turn to base heading of 072 And depending on the wind, of course, you can adjust the heading to maintain a track of 072. And as usual, since we are very close to the final approach fix, we'll go with the gear down flaps 15. Set flaps 15 speed and allow the speed brake. If you use the 1200 feet per minute there is not much to do in the uh, base leg except for to monitor the airplane and then you wait until you get close to the to the extended center line and two things that you can utilize here or one thing that you can utilize to decide when to turn from base to final is using the turn vector once the tip of the turn vector crosses the extended center line start a turn toward the runway uh, runway heading in this example is 342 but turn instead of a heading of 352 so 10 degrees shy of the runway heading just to make sure that the airplane will continue on uh, in the direction of the localizer to intercept the localizer uh, the other thing is the uh, glide slope will start with full deflection down here but you maintain 1200 feet as you get closer to the uh, to the extended center line and start your turn you see the glide slope becoming very fast 
So then you need to reduce your uh, vertical speed between 600 to 800 feet per minute. And then once you have a correct sensing on the localizer, you go ahead and arm approach. Usually you'll capture both the, uh, uh, the localizer and glide slope. Of course, since I'm slightly outside the final approach fix, I'm not set a lower altitude. If I was going toward the final approach fix or slightly inside, then at this time I'll go and set 1,000 feet above field elevation. Just to make sure that I continue my descent. So as you can see, the glide slope will start with full deflection down. And that is normal for this uh, kind of approaches. So again, once the glide slope comes up, half a dot or so will go ahead with the vertical speed of 600 or 700 feet per minute. And now we are waiting for the uh, tip of the turn vector to across uh, the extended center line and then we'll start our turn to a heading of 352. Okay, so go 352. I'm going to just pause so I can do both of them at the same time. And we reduce the vertical speed here to 600 feet per minute. So of course we have correct sensing as far as the localizer goes, so we can go ahead and arm the approach now. And as you can see, we are coming up exactly on the uh, glide slope, and you have the wall lock and glide slope capture. Once they are captured, as usual, you'll go ahead and set the missed approach altitude, 4,000 feet, set runway heading. And request flap set the target speed and land the checklist. So as you can see, applying a visual approach using this technique usually will result in the best ride for the passengers in terms of the noise because you are doing a continuous descent, partial power but continuous descent to capture the glide slope on the descent. And uh, we, we just use the vertical speed like twice uh, from the beginning at 1200 feet per minute and then when you turn from base to final we reduce it to uh, 600 feet per minute and we arm the approach. If you have any questions, comments or concerns, please let me know. And until uh, next video, this is Abdul Matayasiri. Wish you a safe line and smooth landing. Thank you for watching.